Hello students, welcome back to our channel Physics Gallery Asha Binu and we will be discussing our laws of motion. Hoping all of you have studied the first two lectures. Today we are going to the third lecture of our laws of motion. Okay, where we discuss the third law of Newton. Newton's third law. We are going to discuss Newton's third law. Okay, already we have discussed the first law, then also second law. Okay, how to take the equilibrium condition? The first law gives the equilibrium condition and the second law gives how the force acts, what is the equation of force and so on. Okay, we have discussed it in detail and now we are going to the third law and all of you know the third law. The third law states that, tell me, tell me, I want to hear, yes, for every action, for every action, there is an, there is an equal and opposite reaction. All of you know the statement of the third law. Okay, what is that? For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. All of you know the statement. Okay, but even though we know the statement very well, we want to know the concept behind this statement. Okay, we want to know what is the concept, what is the statement actually tells us. Suppose I am giving you an example. A block of mass M is at, is at rest on the surface of a table, on a horizontal surface. So, we can say the weight of the block acts vertically downward on the surface and the surface provides equivalent normal reaction upwards and we will write, we have already written this equation, we have studied this in earlier lectures, m is equal to mg, we know that. Okay, so I am asking you m is equal to mg, the equation in this, in this system, whether it is action reaction pair. Yes, it is the action-reaction pair. Okay, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Correct? Correct? No. N is equal to Mg is not at all the action-reaction pair stated by our Newton. This is not at all the action-reaction pair. Yes, N is equal to Mg in this system. But it is not at all action-reaction pair. Okay, so what does this action-reaction pair um, gives us or tells us? Action-reaction pair must follow the three conditions. It has to satisfy three conditions. The first one is they are similar. They must be similar in nature. Their nature must be same. Okay, then they exist in pairs. They always exist in pairs. And the third one, they act on two different bodies. So, a pair of force which satisfies all these three conditions, similar in nature, must exist in pairs and act on two different bodies. Okay, that is the condition which makes action-reaction pair. What about N is equal to Mg? The equation is correct, but it is not at all action-reaction pair. We have taken this equation in several cases in our lecture 2 and 1. Okay, that, that we have taken. But this equation, I have said that this equation is not at all action-reaction pair. Why? Because Mg, the weight is acting. Mg, the weight is acting on the surface, which is the gravitational force. This force is provided by the earth to the body. Gravitational force. Okay, this is gravitational force. And what about normal reaction? And this gravitational force is provided by the earth on the body. My weight acts vertically downward to the surface. It means that Earth is providing my weight to me. 
Earth is giving the gravitational force to me, which is acting vertically downward. So, gravitational force acts on our body, on our body. Similarly, the normal reaction which is provided by the surface to our body, that is both the gravitational force and the normal reaction now acts on the, both the normal reaction and gravitational force acts on our block. Okay, they are not at all acting on two different bodies. So this statement becomes wrong. This statement becomes wrong. Now we can say they exist in pair. They are acting as pair. And what about whether they are similar in nature? Whether this normal reaction and gravitation force are similar? This is the force provided by the earth to the block. And this is the force provided by the surface to the block. Whether they are of similar in nature? Never they are two different types of force. So it do not satisfy the first condition also. Yes, it is a pair, it is all right, but it is not at all similar in nature and also it is not at all acting on two different bodies. My weight is acting on me, which is provided by earth to me. Okay, and the normal reaction is also acting on me, which is provided by the surface to me. So both of the normal reaction and gravitational force are provided by two other bodies to the same body me or the block clear that's why we have said that normal reaction is equal to mg this pair of force is not at all our action reaction pair clear so do you understood what is this action reaction pair we don't understood what is action reaction pair we understood that m is equal to mg is not at not at all action reaction pair that we understood now now, what is this action-reaction pair? Is there any action-reaction pair exists here? Yes, there is action-reaction pair. Which is that? We will take it separately. Suppose this is our earth. And the block is kept here on the surface of a table, whatever it may be. Here, mg acting downward is the force on the block due to earth. Once more, here, this is our earth. This is our earth. Earth provides weight to the body. And weight is the force provided by earth to the block. Force on the block due to earth. Force on the block due to earth is mg. At the same time, the block attracts earth towards it. The block also, when Earth attracts me towards the earth, towards the center of earth. I am also attracting earth towards me. Okay, so there is a force. There is a force which is provided by the block to the earth in upward direction. Force on earth. I am attracting the block is attracting the earth. Force on earth due to block acting upward direction. Now, force on block due to earth and force on earth due to block are equal and opposite direction shows that they are opposite. This is the action reaction pair which Newton tells us. Clear? Similarly, what about the normal reaction? Yes, normal reaction also have an action reaction pair. What is that? The surface provides, the surface provides a normal reaction to the block. We can Take it as force on, normal reaction on. Okay, normal reaction on block due to this surface. At the same time, the block is providing a normal reaction to the surface. Normal reaction on surface due, the, due to the block. Okay, these are the action reaction pair. So here there are two normal reactions. The normal pre uh, reaction provided by the surface to the block and the normal reaction provided by the block to the surface. They are action reaction pairs. Okay. Here, the weight, the gravitation force provided by the earth to the block and at the same time the block is attracting earth also. The force on earth due to the block. Both of them are action reaction pair. So, this is action reaction pair. Here also, NBS. Normal reaction on the block due to the surface equal to normal reaction on the surface due to the block. These are also action-reaction pair. 
they are equal and they are opposite in direction. These are equal and they are opposite in direction. So this is our action reaction pair. This is also the action reaction pair. But N is equal to MT is not at all action reaction pair because they are two different forces which are different in nature. Here, normal reaction, same nature. Here, gravitation force, same nature. Okay. But here, this is two different nature force. Two forces having different nature and also they are not at all acting on two different bodies. It is acting on the same body. Normal reaction is provided by the surface to the block. Weight is also provided by earth to the block. So on the same body. So this equation is not at all action reaction pair. Clear. And these are action reaction pairs. Now we understood what is action reaction pair. Okay. So Newton's third statement is not to everyone. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That statement is not to everyone. But what is the meaning of that statement? What is the concept behind that statement? Now we understood that. Clear? Okay. So action reaction pair must obey three conditions. The first one, they must be similar in nature. The second one, they exist in pair. And the third one, they must act on two different bodies. These three conditions must be satisfied for a pair of force to become action-reaction. Clear? Okay, so hoping you understood now what is this action-reaction pair. Okay, pause the video and take the notes. Sorry, I have run it. Just to go backward and take the notes. Always try to copy the notes. Okay then only it becomes perfect. So now we know what is action-reaction pair. Okay. They must be similar in nature. They exist in pair and they must act on two different bodies. Clear? Okay. Now we are going to... Con that is over. Now we are going to another condition, another device. Have you heard of the device called as the weighing machine? Weighing machine. What is the purpose of a weighing machine? Yes, we use a weighing machine to take the weight of a body. Okay, weighing machine is used to take the weight of a body in order to measure the weight of a body. Okay, that is the purpose of a weighing machine. All of us know that. All of us have seen the weighing machine also have taken the weight of ours or others also. We know. So we have said that weighing machine is a device which is used to take the weight of a body. That is correct. But actually weighing machine also doesn't give the weight of a body. It doesn't measure the weight of a body. A weighing measure, uh, machine never measures the weight of a body. What? What? We have said that weighing machine is a device which is used to take the weight of the body. And now we are saying that it never, weighing machine never measures the weight. Then why we are taking it is, uh, why we are taking it to take the weight of a body. Okay. It never take, it never measures the weight. But it measures the normal reaction. It measures the normal reaction provided by it, provided by it when it is, when a body is kept on it. Okay, that is, suppose this is a weighing machine. This is a weighing machine, digital weighing machine or not. It is normally a weighing machine and a, when a block is kept on it of mass then, the weight acts downward. Okay, then the weighing machine provides a normal reaction upward. The weighing machine provides a normal reaction upward. Therefore, we know this normal reaction is equal to the weight of the body. And this weighing machine measures the normal reaction. It is measuring the normal reaction provided by it to the block. Okay, when the block is kept on the weighing machine, its weight adds on the machine and the machine has to provide a normal reaction. 
This normal reaction has to be measured by, it is measured by the main machine, which is equivalent to the weight of the body. Okay, so we are measuring the normal reaction, which is normally equal to the, which is generally equal to the weight of the body. Okay, so weighing machine always measures the normal reaction provided by it. Never measures the correct weight of the body. Okay, okay. Therefore, there are several conditions when the when the weight taken by, when the measurement given by the weighing machine, when the block is kept on it, becomes different. For example, for example, suppose we are in a lift. We are in a lift. And inside the lift, the weighing machine is kept. The weighing machine is kept inside the lift. And a block of mass M is kept on it. At first, the lift is at rust. At rust. Or the lift is moving upward or downward with the uniform motion. Either the lift is at rust or the lift is moving upward or downward with normal reaction. With uniform velocity. Sorry, slip of the tongue. With uniform velocity. It is either at rest or moving upward or downward with uniform uniform velocity. We will write uniform velocity. For uniform velocity, is there any acceleration? No. If there is no acceleration, no net force. That means now the weight tax downward and the weighing machine will provide the normal reaction upward. Then we will write N is equal to mg in both cases. Either the lift is at rest or the lift is moving upward or downward with the uniform velocity. Moving upward or downward with the uniform velocity. Clear? Now we are going to the second condition. The lift is accelerating up. Now the lift is accelerating up. This is our lift. There is a weighing machine in the lift. This is our weighing machine. It is lift inside the lift and a block of mass M is kept here. But the system is accelerating upward. The system is accelerating upward. So what are the various forces? The weight acting downward. The weighing machine provides the normal reaction upward. But the system is accelerating upward means N minus Mg. Okay. Gives a M to accelerate up. Or N is equal. Correct. Free body diagram. N is equal to. N is greater than weight Mg. Therefore, the excess force provided by the normal reaction accelerates the lift and the block and the weighing machine upward. So, N is equal to MA plus MG. Or we can write N is equal to M into A plus G or G plus A. Okay. So, what is the equation for the accelerating lift upwards and becomes now? What is the speciality? Suppose a 60 kilogram man is or a block is kept here here the current reading 60 kilogram will be obtained but here more than 60 will be obtained because now the weighing scale never shows the current reading it gives a reading greater than 60 why more than 60 why because the normal reaction provided by the weighing scale is not at all mg it becomes mg plus ma and minju g plus a weighing measure always measure what we have written here weighing it measures the normal reaction not at all the weight okay it always measures the normal reaction now the weighing machine measure weighing machine measures more than that of the weight of the body clear okay now in the third case, suppose in the third case, the lift is accelerating downward, the lift with weighing machine, suppose this is a weighing machine and a block, M is kept like this. So what are the forces acting now to the weight Mg, the normal reaction provided by the surface of the weighing balance upward and the system is accelerating downward. So, for accelerating downward, which will be the greater force? Surely weight. That now we will write weight minus normal reaction is equal to M into A. In order to understand these uh, equations, how to take the net equation, just go to the second lecture. Please, just to follow the lectures in order, then only it becomes perfect to you. Okay, clear? 
Otherwise, also it will be understood. But in order to have a perfect idea, perfect concept, go from first lecture, second lecture, and third lecture. Then only it becomes completely perfect. Okay. N is equal to minus N is equal to Mg minus Ma. Now I will write what will be the measurement given by the weighing machine when it when the lift is accelerating down. Yes, the 60 kilogram block will feel only 55 or 50 or less than 60. Why? Because now the normal reaction is only M into G minus C. Understood? Clear? That is the weighing machine always measures the normal reaction. If it measures the weight of the body directly, then in all of the three cases, the weight will be same. The measurement provided by the weighing machine will be same. But here, when the lift is at either at rest or in uniform motion, either upward or downward, the weighing machine gives the correct weight because the normal reaction is equal to energy. But when the lift is accelerating upward, the weighing machine gives more measurement. That is, the measurement will be greater than the actual weight of the body. Okay, because the normal reaction provided by the weighing machine or the surface is now equal to M into G plus A. When the lift is accelerating downward, the normal reaction is only M into G minus A. That is, the weighing machine will show less than that of the current weight. Okay, and in another case, we will go to the fourth one, fourth case, freely falling lift. What is freely falling lift? It means that the rope which is connected to the lift, metallic rock, which is connected to the lift, breaks. Then what happens? It falls down. With which acceleration? For a freely falling lift, the acceleration is equal to G downward. Okay, for any freely falling body, the acceleration is G downward. And here there is the weighing machine and the block. What is the equation for a freely falling body? What is the equation for a body accelerating downward? The normal reaction is now equal to, now we will write, N is equal to M into G minus, what is A? G minus A. What is A now? N is equal to M into G minus G or the normal reaction becomes zero. Okay, so what is the normal reaction shown by the weighing machine now? It is equal to zero. That is the body feels weightlessness. In this condition, the body feels weight. If the normal reaction becomes zero, the condition is called as weightlessness. Okay, the body feels weightlessness now. Clear? Okay, and suppose, suppose the lift is accelerating down, accelerating down with A greater than G, even if A is equal to G, here A is equal to G, even if A is equal to, what is this? Oh, A equal to G. Okay, and even if A is equal to G, there is no normal reaction. If A is greater than G, what happens? What happens? Write the equation. N is equal to M into G minus Z. And A is greater than G. N becomes negative in nature. M becomes negative. What does it mean? What does this mean? That is, now, can you see? Now, the lift is accelerating down with a value greater than G, but the block and the weighing machine is accelerating. The block is accelerating with A. So, this is greater. What happens? We can see the lift moves faster than that of the freely falling body. So, the block will remain like this. This will be the position of block. Why? The lift is accelerating with greater acceleration. More than G. The body is uh, falling down with the G. But the lift is accelerating down which is more than G. With a value which is more than G. So what happens? Lift moves faster down and the body is lesser than that. The speed of the body downward will be lesser than that of the lift. So what happens? Lift moves downward faster than that of the block and the main machine inside. So both the block and the main machine will be on the top, touching the surface of the upper surface of the lift. This will be the position clear. Clear. So what is the speciality of the weighing machine? It always measures the normal reaction. And what is the speciality of normal reaction? It is dependent on the conditions. Always normal reaction is not equal to weight. 
it is equal to the rate only if the body is at first or in uniform motion. Otherwise, the normal reaction in vertical motion, we are discussing about the vertical motion. Okay. So, in other, all other cases, when the lift is accelerating upward, normal reaction is m into g plus a, it measures more than that, that of the current weight of the body. When the lift is accelerating down, normal reaction is m into g minus a, that is, it measures less than that of the current weight of the body. If the lift is freely falling, that is, acceleration becomes a g, the normal reaction will be zero. And if the lift is accelerating, accelerating down with the value greater than that of the G, what happens? What happens? Accident occurs. That means what happens? The lift moves down with the greater speed than that of the freely falling block and the machine. So what happens? They touches the upper surface. No, the lift touches the uh, block and the position of block will be like this. Okay. Clear? So, what is the speciality of normal reaction? Now we understood. So, weighing machine is a device which is used to take the weight of the body. But the speciality is that it never measures, it never measures the weight of the body. It never measures the weight of the body, but it measures the normal reaction provided by the machine to the body. Okay, clear? Take this much of NORS. Okay, clear. So, hoping you have taken the notes or hoping you understood the topic. Now, I am going to the rub. You have to take each and every point. Clear. So, now we understood the third law. What is action reaction pair? The law, the statement is not to everyone. But what is the correct meaning of this action reaction pair? What is the speciality of action reaction pair or of us now we know it correctly. And also, what is normal reaction? What is the speciality of normal reaction? Normal reaction is different in different cases, conditions. And hence, the weighing machine already is a weighing machine which always gives the normal reaction, shows the reading differently in different conditions. Clear? Okay, that is over. So, we have completed the first law, the second law, and the third law. And in the second law, when we have studied the second law, we stated that the rate of change of momentum, second law always gives about the rate of change of momentum, second law always tells about the rate of change of momentum, okay. And according to the second law, the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the applied force, the external force, and takes place in the direction of the external force. Moreover, the constant k in the directly proportional condition is equal to 1 in SI system. So, the equation becomes F is equal to dp by dt. This is our second law. Okay. All of us know this is our second law. Suppose, suppose if the net external force acting on the system, net external force acting on the system becomes 0. This force is external force. If the net external force acting on the system becomes zero, if F is zero, surely dp by dt also becomes zero. dp by dt also becomes zero. Rate of change of momentum also becomes zero. Rate zero means dp is equal to zero. Okay, change in momentum becomes zero. If the change in a quantity is zero, it means that quantity is constant. Suppose initially the value is 5, finally the value is 7. Whether the change is equal to 0, not equal to 0. Initially the value is 5. The change is, uh, it converts to 3. Whether the change is equal to 0, it is also not equal to 0. Initially the value is 5, after some time also the value is 5, the change is equal to 0. So the change becomes 0 only if the values are same. Okay, initial and final values are, values are seen. That is the momentum. Now, since the change in momentum is zero, now we can say the momentum remains constant. The momentum remains constant. And this statement, if net external force is equal to zero, 
the momentum of the system remains constant and it is called as the statement is very 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 important statement in our physics dynamics and the statement is called as the law of conservation of energy law of conservation of energy so law of conservation sorry law of conservation of momentum sorry 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 please pardon me the law is called as the law of conservation of momentum so sorry the law of conservation of momentum so what is law of conservation of momentum states oh don't be f don't be fear me okay so what is law of conservation of momentum law of conservation of momentum states that tell me law of conservation of momentum states that if the net external force acting on a system is zero if the net external force acting on a system not on the individual body for the system if the net external force is zero then what happens the momentum of that system will be constant conserved which has a very large application in our physics dynamics okay the statement is called as the law of conservation of momentum if the net external force acting on a system is zero the momentum of the system remains constant write this law of conservation of momentum okay so law of conservation of momentum of energy law of conservation of momentum states that if the net external force acting on a system is zero the momentum of the system remains constant this this Uh, statement this law also has a lot of practical applications a lot of practical applications very important law in physics we will discuss one now some of the applications the first one is have you heard of recoil of a gun recoil of a gun what is the recoil of a gun suppose we have got a gun suppose this is our gun yeah very good yeah very good this is trigger okay very good yeah super gun ma'am your gun is very 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 super yes i know so this is my gun and the gun contains a bullet okay this is the bullet and when the trigger is pressed the bullet moves forward it ejects out from the gun that is how it works okay so what is the action taking place here what is the what is the concept here when we press the trigger all of the system contains only internal force not at all external force during firing of a bullet from a gun we will write when a bullet is fired when a bullet is fired from a gun from a gun only internal force is present only internal force is present okay force is present that is f external is equal to zero or momentum remains constant or we can write the momentum before firing is equal to the momentum after firing okay the momentum after firing the momentum before firing is equal to the momentum after firing what is the momentum before firing there is a gun of mass capital m and there is a bullet of mass small m but both of them are at rest before firing the gun and the bullet are rest before firing so velocity for both the gun and bullet is zero if the velocity is zero what is the momentum momentum is mass into velocity what is momentum momentum is mass into velocity if there is no velocity what is the momentum before it is equal to zero okay if the momentum before firing is zero surely the net momentum of the system after firing will be also zero that means after firing the bullet moves in forward direction with the speed v surely that's the purpose of firing so there is momentum for bullet okay momentum for bullet but if the bullet only attains the momentum its value becomes zero mass will never be zero therefore velocity of the bullet will be zero 
Okay, but we want the velocity of the bullet. The bullet attains certain specific velocity, high velocity. So, in order to make the system concerned with the momentum, what happens? The gun also attains a momentum. Capital M into capital B is the momentum of gun. The gun also attains a momentum. So that the net momentum attained by the bullet and the gun after firing will be equal to momentum before firing. That means which is equal to zero. Or we can now write on opposite side, we will write mass of the bullet into well, mass of the gun into capital M and capital V stands for gun. Small m and small v stands for bullet. We can write capital M into capital V is equal to small m v or what happens capital V is equal to small m v by capital M with a minus sign. That means the when the bullet moves in forward direction, the gun attains the same momentum in backward direction. Okay, and this velocity with which it recoils back is called as the recoil velocity of the gun. And the whole process is called as recoil of a gun. So why gun recoils back when a bullet is fired from it? Because when the bullet is fired from it, it attains a momentum in forward direction. And since the momentum before firing was zero, in order to make it zero, the gun also attains the same momentum as that of the bullet, but in backward direction. So the gun moves back and the phenomenon is called as the recoil of the gun and the velocity with which the gun recoils back is called as the recoil velocity, which is equal to minus mv by capital M. Small m, small v for bullet and capital M for the gun. Clear? This is the recoil velocity of the gun. Clear? So this is the recoil velocity and this is why the gun recoils back then the bullet is fired from the and this is purely based on which law? Law of conservation of momentum. Clear? Okay. So, take the laws. Okay, okay. One, two, three. It is over. So, recoil of a gun is a good example for law of conservation of momentum. The next example for the conservation of momentum is collision, mechanical collision. When two bodies collide with each other, what happens? What happens? Only internal force occurs. Two, two bodies undergoes collision. The collision between two bodies is purely due to the internal force, not due to the external force. Suppose the first body A, the second body B, masses M1, M2, moves with the initial velocity is U1, U2. In the same direction with the u1 greater than u2, what happens? What happens? A collides b. A collides b. Okay. And after collision, and after collision, this is during collision, and after collision, what happens? A with the mass m1 now moves with the speed of v1, and b with the mass m2 now moves with the speed of v2. Okay. Clear? Okay. Then, in, uh, during this process, is there any external agent? During collision of these two bodies, is there any external agent? In none of the mechanical collisions, external agent is present. That is, external force is present. Only internal force is present. If the external force is zero, what is conserved? Momentum is conserved. Now to F external, we can write F external is equal to zero. So momentum is constant or conserved. We can say momentum before collision is equal to momentum after collision. Or m1 u1 plus m2 u2 is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2. Clear? So for any mechanical collisions, we can say momentum is conserved. Another example for the law of conservation of momentum. Clear? Okay. So this is mechanical collision is also an example for law of conservation of momentum. Then, explosion of a shell, that is a bomb explodes, a cracker, oh, this one, you are so much dangerous. No, at least a cracker explodes. During explosion of any material, momentum is concerned because explosion is only due to the internal chemical reactions. 
or internal reaction, not due to the external force. So the third example is commonly taken as the explosion of shell. In all of these examples, momentum is concerned. For explosion, only ex internal force is present, external force is zero, momentum is conserved. Okay, what is this concert? So we can say momentum before explosion is equal to momentum after explosion. Okay, what will be the momentum before? You have to take the momentum after. For example, as an example of this, we will take, suppose a bomb at rest of mass M explodes. Suppose a bomb of mass M at rest explodes into two equal pieces. It explodes into two equal pieces. M by 2, M by 2. Understood? A bomb of mass M at rest explodes into two equal pieces. What happens to the two pieces? Tell me, explosion is due to the internal force. External force is zero. Momentum is concerned. Momentum before is equal to momentum after. What was the momentum before? Zero is equal to what is the momentum after? M by 2. Tell me what happens. The moment after will also be zero. That is one of it moves with the velocity V1 and the other moves with the velocity V2. We will write M by 2 V1 plus M by 2 V2 is equal to. They will give the direction in which direction one of them is moving. What then maybe this will be the condition or we will write M by 2 V1 is equal to minus M by 2 V2. Okay, v, that means M by 2, M by 2 are cancelling. V1 is equal to minus V2. If one of them moves towards the right, then the other will move towards the left with the same velocity. If it is divided into two equal pieces, only if the uh, mass is equal. If the mass ratio is in the form of 1 is to 3, then it will be different. Okay, like this, we will take the momentum conservation for any explosion, for any explosion. Clear? Suppose it is given that the bomb at rest, now for another example, a shell at rest explodes into, a shell of mass M explodes into three equal, three pieces, three equal pieces, suppose like this, okay, three equal pieces, that is this is M by three, this is also M by three and this is also it does. It means that always it is split up into equal pieces. The in the question, the mass will be different also. In such a way that two of them moves perpendicular to each other. Two of them moves perpendicular to each other with the same speed. Then what about the third mass? What is the speed of the third mass? How to take? So this is P1. M by 3 into V. And this is P2. Clear? M by 3 into V. The net momentum P1 towards right, P2 towards upward, the resultant P. This is the P, P12, momentum of 1 and 2. If this is the momentum due to the first and second mass, in order to make the net momentum zero, it was at rest, the block was at rest, that means momentum before is equal to zero. Then momentum after will be also equal to zero. That means in order to make the net momentum zero, the third mass will move like this in such a way that its momentum P3, its momentum P3 will be equal and opposite to P due to 1 and 2. Clear? It will move like this with the same momentum as that of the resultant of P1 and P2. Clear? What do you understood? That means... If the block of mass or if the shell of mass M explodes into three equal pieces in such a way that the two pieces move perpendicular to each other, then what will be the momentum, what will be the velocity of the third piece? You have to take the resultant of the two momentums given. This is the momentum, momentum given P1 and P2. Take the resultant, then the third piece will move with the momentum which is equal and opposite to the this resultant of first and second. Okay, so P3 is equal to minus of P12. This will be the direction and the magnitude will be same as that of this. Okay, so always we will apply the law of conservation of momentum for explosion of shell, also for mechanical collisions, also for recoil of a gun. Okay, rocket propulsion. When a rocket propels, what happens? The fuel inside it is burned. 
So, so before propulsion, the net momentum of the fuel and the rocket is zero. But after propulsion, what happens? The exhaust gas, the gas okay, due to the combustion of the fuel inside the rocket, it moves in the downward direction. As a result, the rocket moves in upward direction. It propels up in order to make the momentum of the rocket fuel system zero because the momentum before propulsion of the rocket was zero. They were at rest. Both the rocket and the fuel were at rest. So the momentum before propulsion was zero. Therefore, the momentum after propulsion will be also equal to zero. But the exhaust gas moves downward. Just like the recoil of the gun, what happens? The rocket moves upward with the same momentum as that of the momentum of the exhaust gas. So there are a lot of examples of our illustrations for law of conservation of momentum. Okay, do you understood what is the law of conservation of momentum? Yes, very good. Take the notes, go through the topic. Okay, may I run? Good. Now, so we are discussing about the first law, the second law, the third law. Examples, law of conservation of momentum, what, what they being machine already, already do. Okay, everything. So in the first law, first law of Newton gives if the net external force is equal to system is equal to zero. If the net external force acting on the system is equal to zero, the system will be in equilibrium. Ma'am, today you are making a lot of mistakes in talking. Oh, yeah, I know. Pardon me, dear students. What about the second law? The second law states that F is equal to dp by dt. And the third law states that action is equal to minus reaction or we have discussed in detail. Then we have taken law of conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum. Or we have discussed in detail. Hoping all of you understood this much of topic. And to now today now we are going to a new force. One more type of force we have to discuss and that is a spring force. Okay. So we are entering into the next topic. Spring force. Have you heard of spring? Have you seen a spring? Yes, all of you have seen a spring. Okay, so now we are going to a spring force. We are going to discuss about the spring force. That is, suppose a spring is present. Any spring has a constant K, which is commonly called as the spring constant. A spring has a constant, it has its own constant, which is dependent upon its nature, the nature of the spring, and that constant is called as the spring constant. The speciality is that when a force is applied on one end of the spring, listen, have to listen carefully, when an external force is acting on the uh, right end towards the right, a force is acting towards the right, when we stretch the spring, what happens? The spring develops a restoring force. The spring develops a restoring force in opposite direction. This is taken as the spring force. Okay. When an external force pulls it or stretches it towards the right, the spring develops due to its elastic nature, the spring develops a restoring force. And according to Hooke's law, which law? Hooke's law. Mr. Hooke had given a law which states that this restoring force is directly proportional to the displacement. And on changing the displacement proportionality, we will get a constant, we will get a constant k into x in opposite direction. Why? Because extension will be in the direction of applied force. But the restoring will be in the opposite direction. Okay, so this force is called as the spring force. This force is called as the spring force. Okay, so Fs is the spring force. Clear? K is the spring constant. Any spring has a constant. And X is the extension on the spring. Sometimes compression on the spring. The spring may be compressed also. If the spring is compressed like this, then the restoring force will be opposite to the compression. 
okay and the negative sign shows that negative sign shows that the spring force will be always will be always in opposite direction in opposite direction to extension or compression spring force will be always in opposite direction to the extension of compression okay and this equation is given by hooke's law which we will discuss in detail in our elasticity also okay so this is spring force all we understood a spring of constant decay when an external force is provided extension or compression occurs in that direction then a rhetoric force develops which is opposite to the extension or compression and we will write the equation spring force is equal to minus kx according to hooke's law all of this is similar not just now we are going to the various conditions we are going to certain examples suppose a spring is attached to the wall like this and an external force stretches the spring towards the right okay so that it undergoes an extension x then what will be the spring force now the spring force is equal to minus kx is there any doubt no doubt that we have written already suppose the spring the spring was stretched to both the sides by force f1 and f2 like this so that on a, uh, by providing the force f1 it attains a attains an extension x1 in right direction and an extension x2 in left direction clear that is the spring is now stretched with the two different forces f1 and f2 in opposite direction like this then what happens what happens it undergoes an extension force f1 provides an extension x1 and f2 provides an extension x2 then what will be the spring force then what will be the spring force listen listen very important careful when f1 is acting towards right the spring force acts towards we will write on the down oof ah uh, the spring force will be to this direction okay to this direction okay clear and similarly when f2 extends towards left the spring force will act in this direction so may i write this as k into spring is single k into x1 and this as k into x2 okay clear here f s is equal to k into k into oh, x1 and this as k into x2 may i write like this because f is equal to minus kx never this is wrong because for a given spring for a given spring the spring constant the spring force will be constant for a given spring the spring force will be constant throughout the spring the spring force will be constant so we never write like this here the correct equation is the spring force throughout the spring is equal to the spring force throughout the spring is equal to k into the total extension x1 plus x2 we never write f1 is equal to k into fs on the right side is equal to k into x1 fs on the left side is equal to k into x2 this is wrong for a given spring in given condition the force is constant so we have to write it as throughout this spring the force is fs which is equal to k into x1 plus x2 but here the direction is towards the right and here the direction is towards left that is all right but the spring force is constant throughout the spring which is equal to k into x1 plus x2 clear that means we can compare a spring with that of a string suppose this is a massless spring this is also a massless spring so if we provide a force towards right or left throughout the spring the tension will be same okay similarly throughout the spring the free storing force will be same throughout it will be same throughout the spring clear for a given spring for a given condition the force will be same clear clear okay that means we can compare the spring force the restoring force in the spring with that of the tension and that is the best way the easiest way to take the spring force clear okay 
Do you understood? Okay. Pause the video and take the notes. I am going to work. Okay. And now we are going to the next example. May I take another example? Now I am going to the spring force with that of the only with that of the tension. It is the best way to take. Suppose the third example. Suppose there is a ceiling and the spring is connected and a mass M. And gradually what happens? The spring extends gradually. Gradually it undergoes an extension by X. How to take the spring force? Compare it with the strain. Compare it with the strain. We had written Mg downward. Tension T upward. T is equal to Mg. Similarly, similarly. Mg downward. Okay. Spring force upward. Compare the spring force with the tension. We have to write Fs is equal to Mg. But here there is a condition. Gradually. The spring extends gradually, not instantaneously. That is fastly, but a gradual extension. Very important, not this. Okay. So, Fs is equal to Mg or we will write Kx is equal to Mg or now the extension X becomes Mg by K. Gradually, the extension becomes Mg by K. Clear? Clear? Next question. Suppose there is a pulley, a mass M1, and there is a spring with a mass M2. And M1 is greater than M2. What happens? M1 accelerates it down and the spring accelerates up. Okay, we know that. And there will be an extension in the spring. Compare, I have said that, compare this to our string system. Compare like this. Do you remember this? This is M2 and this is M1. M1 greater than M2. Then what happens? How to take the equation? M1 T downward. Tension T upward. Acceleration downward. M2 T downward. Do you understood? Go to the lecture 2 of loss of motion. There we have discussed this in detail. And on equating, we had got the equation acceleration is equal to m1 minus m2 into g by m1 plus m2 and tension t is equal to 2 m1 m2 g by m1 plus m2 please pardon the students who are for the first time watching the loss of motion this video okay that means in the second lecture we have discussed it in detail and have the right equation Okay, so go to that lecture. If you don't know how to take the acceleration and tension, go to the lecture 2 of the loss of motion. There we have discussed it in detail. Okay, and the same condition, the same thing. Here there is weight M1G downward and tension T upward. But here there is weight M2G downward and spring force upward. And we know throughout the string tension is A. Similarly, throughout this string, spring, spring tension uh, system, the restoring force will be equal to tension. Or we will write Kx is equal to tension. The same equation to M1, M2G by M1 plus M2. Clear? Okay. And go to the equation for extension to M1, M2G by. This is the best way to take the the extension in the spring, compare it with the string. That is the best way. Okay, take this much of knots. Clear? Okay. May I rub this? In the same question, suppose in the same question, suppose the figure is given like this, the fifth one. Ceiling, a spring is connected to the pulley like this and the strings are connected M1, lesser mass M2. The system accelerates down. Here the system accelerates up. So what to take? Take this, compare with this, with that of the string pulley. M1. And this is 
and 2. Okay. So, for pulley, this tension, always tension acts out from the point. We have studied that. Always uh, tension acts out from the point taken. Now, I am taking the pulley. From the pulley, tension T acts downward. Here, the tension T acts downward. Single string, single tension. Then, from this pulley, here, tension T dash acts upward. Another string, another tension. But that will be equal to 2T because the system is in equilibrium. Okay, clear. Similarly, here it is for the pulley. Here it is tension T. Here it is tension T. And now it becomes... Now it becomes restoring force of the spring Fs which is equal to 2T. Compare, compare it with that of the spring. Take it as equivalent to spring. Take it as equivalent to the string. Ah, slip of the tongue, please. So all of the concepts are perfect. Please go through the concept very well. Okay. So now Fs becomes 2 times T. And what is T? What is T? What is T? T, 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 T. Fs is equal to 2 times 2m1 and 2g by m1 plus n2. Dear students who don't know these two equations, please go to the lecture 2 with that we have discussed it in detail. Okay, clear? So it is the best way to compare a spring with that of the string. A massless spring. In our syllabus, we have to discuss only about the massless spring. So massless spring and massless string are same. In the same way it acts. So if the spring system is given, you have to compare, you have to convert it into a string system. And solve it and put the value of the tension T as the spring storing force. Just like here, this is the question. Here uh, we have to find the uh, uh, spring force in this case, which is equivalent to this T. So we have taken spring force as T, then comparing it with that of the value. But now, this is the spring taken. Now, this spring is equivalent to this string. Here, the tension is 2T. T, T, T downward, T dash upward. T dash will be equal to 2T because the system is, the system is in equilibrium whether the pull is moving up or down. No. So, it is in equilibrium. Similarly, this T dash will be equivalent to the spring force Fs, which is equal to 2T. Clear? Please go through the concepts 1, 2 or 3 times. Okay, then it becomes perfectly all right. Okay, very important concepts related to the topic dynamics. So, hoping today we the discussed the topics, which were the action-reaction pair, what is the speciality of action-reaction pair, okay, weighing balance, how it measures the weight of a body, then law of conservation of momentum with its example, and also the spring force. Hoping all of you understood it very well. So till the next class, I'm writing this class. Till the next class, hoping you will study the topic very well. Okay, please study that. Please be sincere to your studies. Okay, be sincere to your studies. Be sincere to your parents and study well. Go well. See you in the next class. And this is our channel, Physics Gallery, Asha Okay.